Hi, in this lecture, I'll be continuing reviewing uh, inventory management uh, models. Okay, in our last lecture, I covered the basic and the simplest model. One of the simplest model inventory management is economic order quantity. And the, the basic question in inventory control systems are, how much order are we going to give? And when we are going to give it th that order? And in our, in our last lecture, I talked about reorder point, but I didn't deeply talk about it. I, I didn't show how to calculate it. In this lecture, I'm going to uh, show how we are going to calculate reorder point. And then we'll be answering when to give an order question. And how much given order was already defined by Q, the amount of order or ordering quantity. Also in Practice, uh, remember one of the assumptions of EOQ was one SKU, okay, only one SKU, and we assume that there is no relationship between SKUs. So if that, if that SKU is finished goods, so we can talk about independent demand. However, if that SKU depends on some other products like components in, in Automotive, okay, or uh, let's say that chip in a laptop are actually show dependent demand structure because the demand to a chip, demand to a nut, demand to a wheel depends on the demand of automobile. Okay, so in these models we focus on the SKUs which have independent demand. There are also in general two inventory review systems. The first one is continuous review system. The second one is periodic review systems. Okay, so continuous and periodic periodic review systems guys in this course i will be reviewing continuous review systems okay periodic review systems for advanced inventory management course so what are the difference between them in continuous review systems systems we know how much we have on hand continuously Simil okay so for example when you go for shop when you go to a supermarket for shopping as soon as the cashier scans your product and you purchase it the amount of that product in the inventory is reduced by one okay in the periodic review system you have to go to your storage area every week, every month, in some period of time, and count how many you have on your hand, okay? So you know how much you have on your hand, actually, every week, every month, so every period, every, every some specific period of time. So if I ask you how much you have, how much you, how, mu how many chocolate bars you have on your hand today, you may not know it because you haven't counted yet, or you can give me an approximation number. But in the continuous review system, you can give me, as long as you keep your records accurate, okay, you give me exact now exact on-hand inventory data as soon as I ask it, okay? So because of the emerging technologies, continuous review policies become uh, practical and also popular in practice, okay? So let's talk about this continuous review systems. Uh, there are some uh, parameters uh, we control in a continuous review systems. One, uh, the inventory position is one of them. Inventory position it actually shows how much we have on hand at the point of time we uh, check the system. Okay, and reorder point show the reorder point shows where we are going to give an order, okay? And scheduled receipts are the amount of orders on transit. We already gave an order, 
which it was uh, loaded to a truck and it is on the road and coming to our storage okay on hand inventory and back orders back order means if we received order before and if we couldn't meet that order if we are going to meet them in future it is called back orders okay so inventory position is typically calculated as on hand inventory this is the physical amount of inventory in my storage area plus scheduled receipt because i'm going to receive that order in a give in a period of time and minus back order which i haven't met before okay so that was the eoq model we described before right Executing model, and this is the reorder point. It shows that when the on hand inventory reduces to this point because of constant demand, give an order. And after, if you give this order right now, right that point, okay, it will take L period of time, which is lead time, and then I will receive my order and my on hand inventory goes up right there. Okay, because I give an order at this point of time, I can immediately say that inventory position goes up right here because inventory position also considers orders on transit. So, as we already see that reorder is reorder point is actually equals to demand during lead time, right? As long as we keep enough inventory to do, to meet demand during lead time i will never have any stock out as long as the demand is certain and known so in this example if on hand inventory is 10 units and if the reorder point is 100 units if there are no back orders and one open order so i already gave an order about 200 units which is on the road okay so should we give a new order let's see if the inventory position or on hand inventory position is below uh, reorder point, then we may consider it, right? On hand inventory is 10, scheduled receipt 200 units, back order is 0, so inventory position is 210. So no need to give a new order because re it is more than reorder point. Okay? So we said that reorder point is equal to demand during lead time. Let's take a look at this example to see how reorder point is calculated. Demand for a chicken soup at a supermarket is always, is constant and known at 20 cases a day. Okay? And the lead time is four days. So, it, and it's also constant and known. Okay? If it is four days, so we said that reorder point is lead time during demand. This is the demand per day. This is the lead time. So this is going to be the reorder point. That's it. Okay. And the shelves were just restocked with chicken soup, leaving an on-hand inventory 100 case. This is the this is 10 cases on-hand inventory, no back orders. Okay. But there is an open order which is on the road pipeline inventory on transit for 200 cases. So what is the inventory position? On hand inventory 10, scheduled receipt will be 200, no back order, it will be 210 cases inventory positions. And inventory, because inventory position is greater than reorder point, no need to give a new order. Okay, so as we said before, one of the assumptions of EOQ is constant demand, known demand. But in practice, it is not always true. Demand is variable. For the simplicity, uh, we are going to consider that demand is normally distributed in this from now on. Okay. So demand is normally distributed. Remember the normal distribution? Normal distribution looks like this. Okay. And this defined by it is mean and standard deviation so the, the, if the demand every daily so daily chocolate bar demand is 10 units okay in the average and standard 
deviation is 5, it could be 15, 20, 25, even the positive infi infinite and negative infinite, right? So this is how the demand is characterized in, from now on. Okay? So because demand is uncertain, demand is unknown, now in order to protect ourselves, in order to prevent from stock out, we need to keep additional inventory, additional stock. So that's excessive stock, as we discussed before, called safety stock. Okay? Safety stock. So the reorder point will be higher than before because of the safety stock. So the, in the in this continuous review process, review systems with variable demand and constant lead time, it reorder point will be average demand during lead time. It is still the same plus safety stock. Okay. So how we are going to calculate safety stock? I'm going to show it in a few minutes, okay? So this is how it looks like, how the variable demand looks like, okay? And this is the reorder point. And let's say that the safety stock is somewhere right here, okay? In order to calculate safety stock, we need to determine service level. Service level actually determines what is the percentage of the demand we need to guarantee to meet. Okay. So as an operation, as an operation manager, you need to define your service level before calculating your safety stock in continuous review policy. And of course, in, a pract in practice, we need to determine a demand during lead time, probable to distribution, but as I just mentioned that, I'm going to assume, norm assume normal distribution for demand, okay? And if we assume normal distribution, then we need to have its mean and standard deviation. The devi standard deviation of the demand during lead time, standard deviation during demand lead time, and the mean of the demand. Okay. Why we need to have standard deviation of the demand during lead time? Because reorder point is related to demand during lead time. That's why we said that it is equal to average demand during lead time plus safety stock. Safety stock should be enough to protect ourselves until I receive my next order. Okay. So standard deviation of demand during lead time is equal to, in a square root, standard devi variance of demand, variance of demand times lead time. So which is equal to standard deviation of demand times, in a square root, lead time. Okay? So this is equal to standard deviation of demand during lead time. And safety stock can be calculated as standard deviation of demand during lead time times Z. You guys remember from Z? Z from normal table. So how we are going to determine Z? Of course, according to service level. Determine service level. I'm going to show in the example problem in few minutes. After we determine Z, it's easy to calculate safety stock. Safety stock is equal to Z times standard deviation of demand during lead time, okay? So, this slide actually shows how standard demand, uh, standard deviation of demand during lead time is calculated. This is the probability distribution of demand and its standard deviation, okay? And if the lead time is three week, we assume that they are independent from each other, so we actually add them together Okay, at the variances, of course, that's why we do this. Okay, at three times of this and take the square root of this and calculate standard deviation of demand during lead time. And as I mentioned before that, if the ser service level shows what is the percentage of the demand I need to guarantee to meet. 
okay if the service level is 85 percent i actually would like to guarantee to meet 85 percent of my demand and and one minus service level actually shows the probability of stock out so the, in this example it is probable it is 15 percent probable that i may have my i may say my customers that i'm sorry i don't have enough inventory on my hand to meet your demand okay let's solve this example problem okay this is the example problem we saw before bird feeder example and the eoq was 85 units okay still eoq is calculated in using the same formula and suppose that the average demand is 80 unit, 18 units per week and its standard deviation is 5 units. So it is sigma d, okay? The lead time is constant and 2 weeks. So let's calculate the re safety stock and reorder point if the service level is 90%. Okay? So safety stock is equal to z times standard deviation of demand during lead time so we need to calculate this first this is sigma d l t is equal to standard deviation of demand 5 times in a square root 2 weeks lead time okay this is 7.07 how about Z? Z comes from service level. Okay, for that purpose, we need to use we need to use uh, Z table. If the service level is 90%, we need to take a look at its cumulative function, FZ value. And in this table, you need to find 0 0.90. 0 0.90 is somewhere right here. Okay, it's very close to 1.28. 1.28 is the Z value. You may remember from statistics course, okay? Okay. It is 1.28. When we multiply that one, we calculate that safety stock is 9 units. So, so reorder point will be average demand during lead time average demand is 18 units okay 18 units 18 units and lead time is two weeks so safety stock will be two two times 18 plus nine units four to five units okay suppose that the demand during lead time is normally distributed with an average of 85 and Standard deviation of demand during lead time is 40. Find the safety stock and reorder point R for 95% service level. Okay, as soon as the site service level increases, we need to keep higher safety stock. Okay, let me give an example. If you would like to guarantee 100% of your customer orders, so service level is 100%, then Z will be infinite then you will have to keep infinite amount of safety stocks. So it is not possible, right? Okay. So safety stock is equal to Z times sigma DLT. Z will be determined by service level. In this example, we need to take a look at 95% cycle service level. Okay. Let's take a look at our table. We need to find 0.95 in the column of FZ. It is somewhere right here, okay? It's very close to 1.64. So, Z is ex exactly 1.645 for 95% level. This is given. This is given. This is given right here. So the safety stock will be 66 units. Re reorder point is equal to average demand during lead time plus safety stock. Average demand during 
is also given right here average demand so it is equal to 151 units okay Find the safety stock and reorder point are if the cycle service level is 85%. If you would like to guarantee to meet your 85% of your demand, then safety stock will be reduced, right? You don't need to keep more inventory. For the Z value for 85% service level is, let's take a look at the table again. Eighty-five percent, somewhere right here. Okay, one o four. When we multiply one o four by the standard deviation of the demand during lead time, we get safety stock. Safety stock is reduced from sixty-two, sixty-six to forty-two, and the new reorder point is also reduced to one hundred twenty-seven. So. In order to determine, uh, in order to manage your uh, review, uh, continuous review inventory systems, okay, uh, in practice, in practice, you can actually um, consider visualization systems, okay, if you are not monitoring your inventory in real time. It is, this system is called to bin system okay in the to be system it's a kind of visual system it allows your workers to place your orders when the inventory we inventory reads to a certain marker which is the reorder point okay there are two bins okay you separate your stocks into two bins when one bin becomes empty it gives you a sign of that you reach to the reorder point and give an order okay so this is what that system is and in this system the total cost is slightly different from the total cost in EOQ model now we do have cost for safety stock okay and still we use holding cost cost of uh, unit cost of holding one unit okay and multiply with safety stock because safety stock is always kept in our storage area this is the last example i would like to solve for this lecture okay there is a store use a continuous review system one of the company's items has the following characteristic demand average demand is 10 unix per week Setup cost is $45 per order. Holding cost is $12 per unit per year. Lead time is constant and known, three weeks. And standard deviation of pay attention, weekly demand is eight units. And service level is 70%. So in order to calculate Q, we are going to use EOQ formula. We need then annual demand. Annual demand it can be calculated by multiplying weekly demand by uh, 52 weeks. And setup cost is given in the question right here. Holding cost is also given. When you do this calculation, you get that optimal order quantity to minimize total annual and annual holding and ordering cost is 62 units. Okay, so every time we give an order. The or amount of order will be 62 units. Okay, let's calculate safety stock. Safety stock is equal to Z times standard deviation of demand during lead time. We know standard deviation of demand and we know lead time, so we can easily calculate it. Okay. So how about Z? Z will be determined by service level. In this question, the service level is 70%. So for that purpose, we are going to go ahead and take a look at normal table. Okay? Normal table. And consider column FZ. And look for 0.70. 0.70 is pretty much close to this value so we can take either this one or we can do interpolation to calculate exact z value for 
0.70 okay so it is 52.52 so when you do the exact calculation you can come up with 0.525 okay when you multiply by this standard deviation of the demand during lead time you get the safety stock is eight units and reorder point is the average demand during lead time plus safety stock. A weekly demand, average weekly demand is 10. During lead time is 8, 30 units plus 8. It is 38 units. Now let's calculate cost. As we do it before, the first cost term is cost of cost of cycle inventory. This is Q. Q over 2 times. Q over two times holding cost. This is total annual ordering cost. This is demand. This is Q, which gives us the number of orders, total number of orders we give in a year. And this is the ordering cost plus cost of having safety stock. This is the amount of safety stock. This is the holding cost, which equals to this one. Okay. So let me also visualize this policy. In this policy, every time we give an order of Q, which is 62 units, and it reduces with the demand, demand, average demand, but it's not of course it decreases like this it decreases something like this okay because of the uncertainty and it is the average demand is 10 units per week and the reorder point is 38 so as soon as the on hand inventory or inventory position goes to reorder point we are going to give an order and it takes it takes three weeks to receive it okay and then we go up right here and the safety stock is eight units this is this is the level of safety stock we always keep that amount of units on hand to protect ourselves okay how about time between order? Time between order. Remember, time between order is 62 over 520 year. If you would like to convert into months or weeks, okay, uh, if then you can easily convert it, right? So 52 weeks, one year give you that one right so it is about how many so 52 52 10 is equal to 6.2 weeks time between order six point two weeks okay it's enough for today for this lecture. Have a nice day. Take care.